Let me, let me read something else to you then. My object is solely to show that there is no fundamental difference between man and the higher mammals in their mental faculties. In other words, he's saying, look, you're an an I'm an animal, you're an animal. We just, you know, we do what animals do. We're animals. Now remember, beloved, God made us in his image. But what the devil is seeking to do and what he has effectively done through this power is through this philosophy, he is, uh, uh, we are watching the evolution of man from the image of God into the image of a beast. Oh, you didn't catch it. Read Revelation 13 sometime. You'll get it then. The devil, beloved, wants to change us from being in the image of God to being in the image of a beast and ultimately into the image of the beast. The process is called adaptation. So now, as we look at our, uh, as we look at music, and by the way, did you know Darwin also had a theory on music? You know what Darwin's theory on music was? And seriously, you, you go to type in Darwin's theory of music. Darwin's theory of music was that music served the sole purpose of mating. That was Darwin's theory. Music is created simply because men are trying to get women. That's the purpose of music. You understand what kind of mind Darwin had. Once you go down the road that there is no God, everything is just about the animal instinct. So now it's not amazing to see that as many of these hip hop and rock and roll artists are following along that very theory that we find that our men, our young men, are turning into beasts. And our young women are turning into harlots. And both are described in the book of Revelation. Beast, harlot. Beast, harlot. Adaptation, manipulation of the environment in order to cause the species to, to adapt. And it's interesting that pornography, beloved, draws people away from the cross. It draws people away from the cross. So spell number four, spell number four, how much time do I have? 15 minutes, okay. I, I'm not going to be able to finish this in this session, so we'll have to finish it in the next. But let me see how much I can get. Spell number four, uh, August Comte. Anybody ever heard of August Comte? August Comte is known as the father of humanism. Ever heard of humanism? Humanism is the, the, the teaching that mankind is good in and of himself, that he can reason out the difference between right and wrong for himself. You'll remember during the French Revolution, in fact, Great Controversy, page 276, when the goddess was brought into the convention, the orator took her, hand, took her by the hand and turning to the assembly said, mortals, cease to tremble before the powerless thunders of a god whom your fears have created. Henceforth, acknowledge no divinity but reason. I offer you its noblest and purest image. If you must have idols, sacrifice only to such as this, fall before the august senate of freedom, veil of reason. You remember they began to worship what they called the goddess of, of reason. As human beings, we did not need God. All we needed was to depend upon our own thoughts. Humanism teaches that what may be right for you or what may be wrong for that one may not be wrong for and so in today's pluralistic society where we just see, well, what's wrong for you is not right. Do you know what you're wrestling with? You're wrestling with a philosophy that sprung out of the abyss. And you read August Comte's works, and he attributes his teachings to the French Revolution. That teaching says, hey, why do you think the Bible has the corner, the two witnesses have the corner on truth? All right, so do we see that in today's society? Do we find 
that our young people are wrestling against the philosophies of humanism. Yes, we do. Number five, the fifth spell. Ever heard of a man by the name of Rousseau? Rousseau is known as the father of what? Romanticism. Romanticism. Uh, romanticism was, was the opposite of humanism. Humanism said, you know, whatever we think, that is good. Romanticism went the other direction and said, no, 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 no. We need to get away from this thought thing. Thought is not really what counts. It's the emotion that counts. If it feels good, it is good. Romanticism uh, 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 teaches that, that you know, uh, we are to depend upon our emotions. And by the way, um, the best, easiest way for me to sum up what romanticism was all about would be, to, like, would be to say that the romantics of those days would be our hippies of the 60s. They were the poets. They were the ones who were, you know, the, the creative, the abstract. And uh, they, they pushed this, this, this concept of authority. You know, don't let anyone tell you what you have to do or what you, you know, you can be your own person. They had this concept called the rebel hero. And the rebel hero, you know, at that time, the hero would always be someone that was groomed and, you know, this kind of thing. Well, the rebel hero now was an outcast of society, but was nonetheless a hero. So, like, Elvis would be considered a rebel hero. You get, you get that? He was the cool rebel. The rebel that didn't fit in with society, they began to push this concept of art that, you know, you can draw a squiggly line and that's art. Don't let anybody tell you that's not art. You know, and, and that's what they, so, so they were like the hippies of the 60s. And beloved, as I look at today's uh, society and I see, you know, if it feels good, what? Do it. Do you realize, beloved, that this is not just random confusion that you're looking at in society today? This is what kind of confusion? Organized confusion. How much time do I have? Ten minutes. Man, I wish I had like five minutes because I don't want to get into what I need to get into until it's time to get into it. Man, I can't. All right, all right, all right. So let's go to spell number six. Spell number six, and I think I'll know where to cut off here. Spell number six. <laughs> Spell number six. To be continued. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sorry. I cannot do it. I can't do it. Maybe I can jump to spell number seven. No. <laughs> um, okay. What time? What time do we have? What time is it? Nah, because this is going to be the, yeah. Well, I thank you so much for sitting patiently by. <laughs> You've been a great, great, great audience, and I guess I will see you. <laughs> yeah. I guess I will see you. When's our next time? What is it, 2 o'clock? After lunch? <sighs> 2.45. All right, you know what that means, right? Be here or be square. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, friends. But uh, I'm going to have to end it here. We'll pick up. There's a good place to end. Uh, we'll pick up at 2.45 uh, sharp, so make sure that you're here. Amen? Do I have you on the edges of your seat? Good, good. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much um, just for opening our eyes, Lord. Father, we have not yet pulled all this together, and so these still seem like random bits of information. But Lord, as we go into our meeting following this, 
um, this, later this, this afternoon, Lord, pull these things together and open our eyes in an incredible way that we may see the incredible things the enemy is up to and the incredible things you have planned for us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.